Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. So today in this video, we are going to see how to connect the Postman to database. Okay, so this is a Postman official website. I mean, official website. So there you can see like this is a frequently asked question, and they have suggested or they have given the uh, solution or instruction to connect your Postman to a couple of databases. So one is MySQL. To connect MySQL database, you need uh, this node based library, which is MySQL to set the things. And the next one is Postgres. Uh, to use Postgres, so we need a tool like a PostG REST. Okay, so PostG REST is one of the library or one of the tool which will help you to connect your Postgres database to your Postman. Okay. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the Postgres. Uh, maybe uh, the next video I will come up with the how to connect our MySQL. Okay. So when you click on this, so it is going to navigate to this the, their GitHub page. So this is a GitHub page. So what is PostG REST? PostG REST is nothing. It's gonna it is going to serve a RESTful API from the any Postgres database. Okay, so that is what they have given. So the Postgres uh, serves a full RESTful API from any existing Postgres. I mean Postgres SQL database. Okay, so it provides a cleaner, uh, more standard, not I mean more standard and compliant, faster than API that you have uh, developed from the scratch. Okay. And when you install them, they have documentation and they have all the uh, release version, I mean, uh, notes, everything. So to follow the documentation, so when you click on this particular link, uh, it is going to navigate to their particular documentation page. So they have, I mean, very detailed instructions how to do that, uh, installations and usage, uh, everything. Okay. So the first thing, uh, we have to follow a couple of steps to, to set up the things. So the st first step is you have to install uh, first thing you have to download and install the Postgres SQL database. Okay, that you can download from the uh, their official website and make sure uh, as per their requirement. So the Postgres uh, SQL, right? So that is going to you you are going to install the database. It should be greater than or equal to nine point six. Okay. So in my case, I have already installed. So just confirm you have installed the right one. So you can go to come on wrong. So this is a Postgres, uh, sorry, this is a Postgres uh, SQL database. Okay, so this is a Postgres database. So since I have already downloaded and I have installed, so you can also download and install and you can create your database. So by default, it will come with a Postgres database and it will have some couple of tables. Maybe you can create your own table also. Okay, so I have two tables, one is account and one is user. So I have done the setup. So the next thing would be, we want to check the Postgres uh, database version. Okay, so for that you have to use this command, which is uh, Postgres hyphen hyphen Postgres. Okay. So I have installed 15.3 because they have clearly told. I mean, uh, you have to use uh, the version is to be greater than 9.7. Okay, sorry, 9.6. So after that, okay, so we have, I mean, done with the first step, which is installation and we have done. So the next one is you have to start installing the post G REST library. Okay, so to install the post G REST library, uh, so can you scroll down here? Yeah, so the post G REST library is available across all the operating systems given here. So I'm using the Windows. So for Windows, you have a dependency on installing through the chocolatey or scoop. Okay, so in my case, I have installed the scoop. So what I can do now, I can directly copy this command and I can go to the command prompt and try installing this. Okay. So in my case, I have already installed. Okay, so that's the reason I'm getting it is being already installed the version, which is 11.2.4. Okay. So that's the release uh, in the release notes. You can see that is the most recent one, which is I have installed. Okay. So the next step would be after installing also. So you want to confirm. Okay, so the, the installation process is successfully done. So for that, what you can do, you can go to uh, this Postgres, Post G REST uh, help. So to confirm the installation is completely success here. So here also you can see we are getting the, uh, the version release. I mean, this is a release uh, 11.2.4. So which means we have successfully installed. Okay, so maybe you can check like this also. Okay, so which is 11.2.4. So now we are done with the installing the post SQL, I mean, Postgres SQL database and PostG REST library. So these two steps are. So after the step two, 
we have to step three. So in the step three, what we have to do, we have to create one post G rest config file. Okay. So if you go here, so here you can see after checking your post rest, uh, I mean post G rest help everything. So the next step would be you have to create one post G rest config file. So that configuration also they have given the detail, uh, the parameters what you have to create everything. Okay. So this is some, I mean, kind of like a sample file. So which is already I have created. So just copy this. So just go here. This is what my config file is. Okay. So here a couple of things. First thing is dburi. So dburi format should be like this. So this is a first Postgres. And you have to provide your username. So in my case, my username is this one. Okay. So let me go to my database. And so here you can see this is my database name and the owner name also. This is the same thing. And I have other details as well. One second. Let me show this. Yeah. So the connection details. I am using the local host, and this is my port number, and my username is Postgres. Okay. So the same thing you have to follow here. The Postgres is the format here, and you have to follow your username here. So this is username. So in my case, the username is the same thing. Okay. So that's why I'm giving us a username as Postgres. And password, in my case, password also it's going to be a same. And the host I'm using is localhost. Okay. And this is a port number. Okay. And finally, the, the database name. Okay. So the database name, I'm using it here. You can see this is my database name, which is again Postgres. Okay. So that is what I have given. And the schema that I'm using is public one. Okay. That is what I have given. And there should be one uh, role also, so which is a DB role. So I have given the DB role as my name i mean the the role name as postgres okay and this are all optional so maybe you can provide or you can ignore and the port number okay so this is the port the database server is going to run okay. so once this setup is done so you can store this file across i mean in any location so for my case i have placed in the particular location so what you have to know you have to run this command Okay, so you have to start uh, calling this file by using this particular command, which is post G rest. Okay, that is what I'm going to do now. So in case, I mean, in my case, I have kept the file on this particular location. So I'm just copying the file location with along with the post G rest command. Okay, this is a command you have to run by calling this file name. Okay, so post G rest and provide the complete file path of post G rest dot config. So the moment when you click on enter, so you can see it is start listening i mean i mean the connection is successful and it is start listening on the port number 3000 so that is what i have given here okay so now it is running on local host uh, 3000 port so now what you can do you can go to your postman okay so in the postman also since i have two tables right so i i just connected to this particular uh, database which is postgres is a database under this, I have a two tables. One is accounts and one is user. Okay, so I'm going to, I mean, discuss about the users now. So this is a command, basic command. I'm just going to run. So currently, I have totally three records. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to Postman. So this is running on localhost 3000, right? And I'm going to connect for the table, which is users. Okay, so you, I can connect to accounts also. So user, let's see the uh, users first. So when I run this, you can see I'm successfully able to retrieve the details from my Postgres database. Okay, so this is a Postgres SQL database. So here you can see I have totally three records. So all three records are coming here in the form of JSON. So now if I want to connect to accounts, so just one more table I have. Yeah, so accounts also I'm retrieving some details. So let me copy this command. Let me execute for accounts. Okay. In the accounts table, I have two records with this one is John and Mike. So the both records are coming here. So this one is John and one is Mike. Okay. So let me switch back to uh, users because for users I have set up the things. So this is for the get method, right? So likewise, you can do all the operations that are possible, like the inserts and delete, update, everything. Okay. 
So for that, uh, there is one more link. Uh, this one also I will be sharing in the comment, I mean, video description. So table and views. Okay, so here you can see the API operations like a read and we have insert and we have update and upsert, delete, everything. Okay. So there are a couple of options, like uh, for example, you want to query, right? So this is very uh, pretty straightforward. So you are going to retrieve all the users that is available in the data. So when it is come to API, we will apply some filters like a query parameter, path parameter, everything, right? So now uh, I'm just going for another uh, couple of uh, example. So I want to retrieve the user ID is one, right? So what we do, we'll just go with the query parameter. So where user ID equal to one, right? So in this case, we are going to use additionally couple of uh, operators. So these are the operators, which is if you want to use equal ID equal one, then you have to use the keyword for EQ. Okay. So that is what I have tried here. So all the uh, explanations and the, uh, whatever the applicable uh, query parameter that you can use, you can take it from here. Okay. So this is first thing is horizontal uh, filtering and they have one more is vertical filtering. I will tell you. So when I put uh, the equal to one, so I can see now I should be getting only the user ID one. Okay. So if I just give equal three, okay. So I'm supposed to get only the value three. Okay. And this is the next parameter like a greater than, right? So greater than one in the sense like it will, I'm going to get two and three. So similarly we have greater than equal, and we have this um, like operations as well. So whatever the comments that you are going to write in the SQL format, the same things are available in the form of REST API by using the uh, post G REST library, okay? So this is username like a match. I want to see uh, the name start with the J and the name ends with the N, okay? So when I send this, so I'm getting uh, the name, only one name, which is starting with the J and ending with the N character. And any match uh, which start with the M and end with the N. So when I send this, I'm getting a couple of things. One is starting with the mic as a M and one is ending with the John. Okay. So these kind of operations also we can perform. Uh, and you can refer this page completely. All the operators uh, you can use. Okay. And this is what, uh, I mean, uh, horizontal filtering. Now, if you want to do the vertical filtering, for example, uh, you want to, uh, so this is for the vertical filtering you have given, select the first name and the age. Only few things you want to add. Okay. So now, we are getting everything, right? So let me go to the next example. So this is select user ID, right? So it is going to retrieve only user IDs. Okay, so I can avoid the remaining things, like remaining attributes or parameters that is coming in the response. And if I want to select along with the user ID mobile, so this is they are calling as a, a horizontal, sorry, vertical filter. Okay. So now it is coming as a user ID along with the mobile number. So similarly, you have like an order uh, descending, ascending everything as well. So I'm going to uh, get through the mobile number order. You can see it is coming with a 0099 and this one, right? So when I go for uh, ordering with the descending order, so let's see now. Yeah, it is coming in the descending order through by, by the mobile number, okay? So likewise, uh, there are a couple of, I mean, not couple, there are a lot of uh, filter options available. You can, you can explore this particular page. So this is for the retrieval, which is basically a get method. Now I want to add, uh, I want to create one more entry to my database, correct? So currently we have around like a three entries. Now I want to make one more entry, which is which is a basically a post method, create, right, in the REST API. So I'm coming here, uh, just copying the same URL, and I'm going to use uh, one of the data, one of uh, attribute, uh, one of the, I mean, one set of data I'm going to use. So I'm going to give the user ID as four because still, I mean, we have still user ID three here, right? One, two, three. We have totally three records. I'm going to create the fourth record with my name, okay? So when I send this, yeah, it is coming as a 201 created, 201 which is successful created. So now I can go to database and I can run the query to confirm the fourth record is being created. Yes, the fourth record is being created on my name. So this is how we can do the post operation as well to create the things. So the next thing would be like, I want to update or I want to modify, right? So those comments also, are so everything is available here. So here you can see insert update, everything is available. So for example, I want to do update, right? So update, we have to use the patch command and you just send the category or parameter with the request body. Okay, I'm going to the patch request. 
and I'm going to update the user ID for four, which we created just now. So let me go back to the get method. So now let's confirm here also the ID four is listed here. So for ID four, I am going to make some, uh, I mean, update, which is going to update the mobile number. It is like a mobile number. It has something like a double nine, double eight, something. I'm going to update the mobile number. So I'm selecting as a patch method here. And the query parameter I'm sending that ID should be equal to four. Okay, so when I send this, yeah, I'm getting 204, no kernel, which is the, the request is being accepted by the server. Now let's go back to the get method. And so earlier the ID mobile number is double nine. So I'm just uh, retrieving. So now it is updated to zero zero. Okay. So this is what we do the update and we have delete also. So here you can see the delete. So to use the delete, I mean, again, straightforward, you have to, I mean, you have to use the delete, delete method. So I'm going to here and delete method. And I want to delete the ID, which is being created by the post method. Now the number four. Okay. So when I send this request, it is being deleted, which is two not four, no content. So let's go back to the get method and confirm it is being deleted. Yes, it's being deleted. So now let's go to the database also. So now the, the entry number four, right, which is user ID four should not be there. So running the query, yes, you can see it is deleted, right? So this is how we can connect our Postman to our PostgreSQL database. And it is available in the form of REST API. You can play with that, okay? So you make sure the server is always running. So if you stop the server, okay, I have stopped now. So now if I go to here and if I check, it won't work, okay? So it has to be always connected. So now uh, it is it is not always going to be a 3000 port. So if you want to change to something else, for example, I'm going to change for 4000. Okay, just come here and change in the config and again start the server. Now it is uh, listening on the port number 4000. So now let's go here and change it to 4000. And when you use this, it should work. It is working. Okay. So this is how you have to do. I mean, this is how we'll connect uh, our Postman to this Postgres uh, database. Okay. So that is what we have discussed. Uh, maybe in the other video, I will come up with how to connect with MySQL to Postman. Okay. So there are a lot of, uh, I mean, options or the, a lot of features are available on this particular Postgres REST API. Maybe you can explore how best, I mean, effectively we can use this for the database uh, validation through the Postman. Okay. So that's all about this video. Uh, maybe I will come up with another video with how to connect with the SQL uh, with Postman. Okay. So thank you guys.